Welcome to What the Flick, Game of Thrones, Episode 4, and now his watch has ended, also known as, and now my genius is confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> ben Magwish, John Adderall, Cenk Uger. So, very quickly, I'm sure you weren't paying attention to anything I said, because I'm not as dorkified as you guys, but last week I said, so here's what's going to happen. Daenerys is not giving up her dragon. I said, no chance she gives up her dragon. Uh -huh. She speaks Valerian. Yeah, yeah, no, no. And she's gonna kill that guy and keep her dragon and take the army and I thought and didn't say and free them yeah, you for whatever that meant, okay, for whatever right. that's worth. But I mean, it's a 10, <laughs> it's a 10. I knocked it out of the park, nine, yeah. five at a bare yeah. minimum. And I said that uh, Kraster, Craster? Craster. Craster, yeah. <laughs> done. Right. Done this episode. Oh, did you predict that? Yep, yeah. both of those things. Okay. Yeah. The unfortunate part is that it's a walk-off homer, so you're going to have to leave the set. <laughs> <laughs> and but if you do remember, I also said, da 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 da. -da. <laughs> that is true. You did. That's true. You did. Yeah. So yeah, a couple of things happened in the episode. So we've also hit. You know, I think of a, it's like a, you know I used to think of you know if you get like a 80 to 82 is a B minus, 83 to 86 is your is your B, and 87, 88, and 89 is your B plus. Mm -hmm. So 10 episodes, one, two, and three kind of set things up. Eight, nine, and 10 wrap it up. Four through seven, like we're into the meat. Like it's not early on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're into the game. Yeah. The yeah. game's being played. Yeah. <laughs> what uh, what did you find most uh, telling about uh, this week's episode? Well, I like the theme of like revenge and what drives a person, like what's your reason for living. They started it off with the Varys conversation with Tyrion, which was awesome. The whole time he's opening up the box and then eventually you see the guy with his throat, like his mouth is wired shut or something. So I that was pretty tell, awesome. I couldn't tell, how long do we think that sorcerer has been in Varys's box? So, do, okay, hey. you can give this away, it's okay. Uh -huh. All right, so spoiler alert, if you know it, right? In the, how the long has spoiler? He, how long has he been in the box? Did he just get him, uh -huh. or has he had him for like 20 years? Well, see, no, here's the interesting thing, and they occasionally will throw up something that's totally new to the show that's awesome, that's not even in the books. Oh, really? They oh. might have made a comment that he killed him or something, but he didn't have him in a box. It's, oh, it's pretty awesome bad. change. See, look at that, man. Yeah. Just when you thought the TV show couldn't get any better, they're actually yeah. making slight improvements on the book, which seemed impossible. And I so, thought he had just been shipped there, and he was opening up the box to confirm it was him or something right, like right. that. So I th and I also sort of thought that maybe Varys was full of shit this whole time. That like he's always talking about the little birds, the spies, the spy network, and you're like, what real power does this guy have? Does anyone know his spies? Uh -huh. You know, like is his information? Does it always check out? You know, he's such a schemer. Right. But like apparently he has some network that enables him to overseas even and yeah right to capture a sorcerer because yeah. presumably he didn't do it uh -huh. and bring him back there for him. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no. You know, he's the uh, living embodiment of knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. His main currency is knowledge. Those spies give, like he said, uh, stealing someone's papers are much uh, more valuable than stealing someone's purse. And the other thing that I got from Varys, which I love, is that you remember there was a story of because some guy on eBay started with like a pen and wound up with a car. Like and he trading kept trading up. up, trading up. And that's what Varys yeah. did in his life. He started at the very, very, very bottom, he right? Used his body. And he just kept trading up a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, until all of a sudden, yeah, that sorcerer who screwed me in a goddamn box. <laughs> okay, how do you like that for trading up, right? Yeah. And, and one of the most important advisors to the king. Mm. So Varys is badass, I've always loved Varys. Are we not supposed to like Varys? Because I love Varys. Uh, I, I think, I think he's fine. Yeah. I like that he was in multiple uh, scenes in this episode. He doesn't usually get that much play. Uh, and, and I think he's supposed to, I certainly like him more than Littlefinger, who you think oh, of yeah. them together. Like he's uh -huh. the one with a, like when he says, when he was talking to, to Lady Margaret's is that her name? Lady Olena is the... Right, Lady... Lady Marjorie is... Lady Marjorie, sorry. Mother. Mom, that's who I was... Or grandmother, actually. Right. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you, you fucking... Yeah. He's like, yeah, okay, what it doesn't okay. matter. Right. Like, you know, <laughs> well, you asked me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you should know what I mean. Uh, uh, that, uh, that when he said, you know, he liked Ned Stark and there was nothing I could do for him, he, like, you believe that. That's not a throwaway. Mm. He did admi he admired, he said, mm -hmm. Ned Stark. You know, and you don't, you don't feel like Littlefinger admires anyone except in how it relates to him, him and how it can help him. But like, you get the feeling that Varys literally thought, oh, if Ned Stark were on the Iron Throne, this would be good for everyone. Mm -hmm. See, that's really interesting, because I think Varys is in some ways the heart of the show. And the reason I say that from my perspective is Vim's. <laughs> <laughs> you know, intrigue <laughs> out of, you know, violence, violence intrigue. intrigue, mystery, suspense. Mystery, yeah, and sex. Obviously. Sex, sorry, sorry, right. sorry. So, 
Um, the intrigue to me is what makes Game of Thrones a home run. A lot of shows have violence, a lot of them have sex. Almost all of them have to have a mystery, otherwise they're really boring, right? But, but intrigue is what makes it a homer, right? Mm -hmm. And Varys is the, the center of intrigue, mm -hmm. you know? Which side is he on? Remember, do you guys remember he had that conversation in season one with uh, the guy who's Daenerys' main helper, right? I believe that was him, right? Uh, and, and, and he was scheming, but you couldn't tell which side he's on. Like, uh -huh. I, I, I always keep thinking about that. And that's what makes the show awesome. Mm -hmm. I don't know which way Varys is going, and he's so good at it. It's possible that at the end, he screws everyone, <laughs> right? <laughs> Ironically, since he doesn't have anything to screw people with. Were you and they had a great joke about that in the episode, by the way. Yeah. When the non-existent bumps up against the decrepit. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. I missed that. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's um, good. Watch again. When the non-existent bumps up against the decrepit. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that's a great joke. That was a good line. <laughs> okay. um, uh, so I, you said it was about revenge. I didn't think of that as being the theme of the show. I tend to miss the overall arching themes of this, that show and Mad Men. Uh, I, I thought it was just one sort of well-crafted scene after another this week, but I was a little bothered by uh, Tyrion's visit to Varys uh, 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 and his sudden interest in revenge. Mm -hmm. What does he care about revenge? Oh. Or do we not believe him? No, no, no. I mean, he cares deeply. I mean, he was this much away from being killed. I understand, but I and don't see him as seeking revenge. He would only seek, he would be interested in who wanted to kill him so that he could solve it. I think, so that's, that he could, yeah. I think that's what he sees as right. revenge. Is that so the he can only use way leverage. he can, yeah or that he can stop himself from being killed again. Because right. he thinks, I mean, we saw it one or two episodes ago, he was barring himself in his room. Right. He was worried she, she would just storm in and kill him. Like, he seems to be overwhelmed with fear that in some way, because he's lost his influence, but she still has some, that she will be able to kill him. And I think that he wants revenge just to get her out of the picture, basically. Yeah. So, uh, obviously, we still don't know who's got a Theon Greyjoy. Mm -hmm. And you want to talk about mystery. I mean, that's the essence of mystery, yeah. right? Like. Who's got him, and why is this kid going there, saving him, and then bringing him back to where yeah. he was being held captive, but and killing, killed the other four guys? Killing, that's the yeah. thing that's inexplicable. They wanted to find out what the, it suggests that they wanted to find out whether, whether Bran and the other kid, Rickon. Rick, whether Bran and Rickon were really dead. Yeah, and I guess maybe they wanted to find out what his real motivation is and whose side he's on. And that, but, but that, he did, but that didn't ask. Mm -hmm. Theon was just sort of like just babbling, well, but I mean, crying. But, like, right, but that was a suggestion that you'll get to that point. Yeah, maybe. Like you know, what, what I liked about that conversation though is uh, that he obviously he expresses great regret about the choices that he made, and up until this up until this point he'd been sure that what he was doing is right, even if he was failing. And what I like is that he says that he made the wrong choice as he's almost crying. But he's not saying that while he's held captive. He, from his point of view, he's escaping now. He's going to see his sister in a minute. But he's still saying it, even though he's going back to the Ironborn. That, like, it's not just under duress he no, feels no, bad about what he did. It, it, no, it totally builds him up as a, it, it, re it rehabilitated him to some, extent. to some extent. I mean, as someone who innocently killed two orphans <laughs> could be rehabilitated. <laughs> right, and yeah. he didn't kill them, the other guy did, but he yeah. authorized yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Chopped That's, off the, right. the blacksmith's and, head. And, so. and, and part of what, like, what he's saying is that I couldn't be a Stark, not that I didn't want to be a Stark. Mm -hmm. I, like, I'm not Rob Stark. I wasn't born as yeah. Rob Stark. I couldn't be his brother, but my real father was Ned Stark. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But he so. couldn't. He also couldn't be Ironborn. Right. Like neither side uh, would accept uh, him. But all of this suggests, and based on some of the you know reading I did, because I thought it was explained, and I think they did hint at it, as you said, that that we do have an inkling of who holds him. Actually, although it's not been, it was very subtle. Isn't that fair to say? So you I don't know how much I can say without spoiling stuff. Okay, but well, I, here, I don't think that they. I don't do. think they've revealed it. In okay, the show. but all. But we do know is that that when the who showed up in Winterfell to take him. Who who do we know went to Winterfell to quell the iron? Bolton. Right. Bolton Bolton's was bastard. Bolton's bastard sent by Bolton and, by and Rob, Rob Stark. And, and Rob Stark. Yeah. So we. It could be them. Mm -hmm. That seems likely. Sure, they could be them, but we don't know. Right. That's right. Um, and we think we know from the coming up next week that Jamie Lannister is about to get handed to the Boltons. To yeah. the Boltons. Yeah. Um, uh, so very quick then, Jamie Lannister is, uh, that seems like that there's a complete character rehabilitation going on here. Like this is all of a sudden going to be a guy we're actually supposed to root for. 
Well, so that's interesting, and I thought the best, maybe the best line of the, of the episode or, or speech was from Lady... Brienne. Brienne, <laughs> okay. Uh, so the we're, big lady. Yeah, yeah, when we didn't have mics, we were thinking of doing like old silent <laughs> things. <laughs> Brienne, of, Brienne of Tarth? Brienne of Tarth, thank yeah. you. The Sapphire Isle. Yeah, yeah. which turns out it's because of the water. Yeah. There isn't yeah. any sapphire. Anyway, when she said, oh, so now that you've entered the real world and you had a debilitating setback, which almost mm -hmm. every person does, yeah. you're just going to give up. Yeah, and, yeah. He, and, he, and, so, and then he had some bread. Right. Like he was like, all right. <laughs> He's like, that, he so was, was like, healed. That Good was point. his his bite of the bread was point well taken. Point well yeah. taken. Well said. I'm <laughs> not going his stump is covered in mud, and it's just got to be infected so by infected. this point. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there's all this, you know, all these, like there's there's really set up like good guys and bad guys now in a much more clear defined way, which normally I don't love, but I sort of like here because some of the bad guys, some of the good guys were bad guys uh -huh. you know but it seems like like you can root for rob buh, buh, buh. Um, <laughs> and you can root for uh uh jamie now maybe and mm -hmm. obviously he's not he's going to have some moment of where power is possible maybe uh -huh. he'll fail maybe he'll die but it's got to be coming um and uh and then you know and then daenerys mm -hmm. yeah. but yeah. i mean like think, like even if look we're not going to root for this guy but like tywin lannister What's he doing that's so bad? Like he's doing what he thinks he needs to to make his family strong. No. He saved King's Landing. Yeah, but no, he's a terrible guy. He's, he's a, a ruthless he guy. What he does to his son? Is the most, uh, yeah, but that doesn't make you a villain necessarily. Nobody props You're up. crazy. <laughs> no, you <laughs> wait a minute. If Tywin Lannister isn't a villain, who the hell is? No, you prop up your your You're like your, well, Lex Luthor has it. kryptonite, but on the other hand, Cersei Lannister you know, had all of the Superman. Cersei Lannister had all of the bastards of uh, of King Robert just killed in the streets. Like that's a villain. Joffrey has Ned Stark's head chopped off. Like that's a villain. But Cersei did that. He doesn't get, like his son. That's, but that's but but Tywin would have done that. I mean, of yeah, course maybe. he would have done that. Oh, ta yeah. how, who do you think they learned it from? Right. Who do you they think they learned it from? Time. And all those yeah. things when they, with the, that little, like, that little mystery men with their fire god that they, who, who, who have the mountain, not the mountain, who have the. Oh, oh the hound. Who yeah. have the hound. Oh, the band of brothers. I want to ask oh, about the, that. The band of brothers. <laughs> those guys, like they, as they point out all the sort of horrible things that have been done, most of those things are done by Tywin. Like that's those, the, the yeah, killing and, of the orphans. Tywin the, probably is the guy who ordered the killing of the Targaryen children. Yeah, that's a good point. Right? Yeah. Okay. And that's the thing that everybody's like outraged by. Yeah. So, and what's funny is, of course, as always with all these things, is that you can kill all the children you want on the countryside. You kill the Targaryen children, people are like, exactly. whoa, that seems uncool. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so now let's go to the Brotherhood uh, of the Without, without the banners. banners. Right. So I'm now a little confused because this is Game of Thrones and it's, this is exactly what I love about it, uh, ironically. Am I supposed to root for them or the Starks? <laughs> they don't like the Starks, but I love the yeah. Starks, but they seem badass and I love them. Well, they, they like the people. Uh -huh. but they, they like the people who've been savaged by the war. They, they want a leader who would sort of respect the people. I don't think they, they don't hate the Starks. Well, I think that they hate the Starks to the extent that Stark forces are killing innocents at almost the same rates that Lannisters seem to be. You again with the almost the same rates. These are different <laughs> people. There are some good yeah. guys and bad guys, but, but they also, you know, when they grab up Arya, they're like Ned Stark's daughter. The, this forest is no place for Ned Stark's daughter. Mm -hmm. Like they're, you know, they're not holding. They're not holding the fact that she's a Stark against her at all. In fact, yeah. they're protecting her because she's a Stark. Well, are they protecting her? Or are they planning to ransom her? Like they could be using her for something. I get the um, feeling they're not. Yeah, good, they're the good guys. But, but I like they're not, they're like, they don't just, they don't just kill the hound. They even have an fight her, which I like. Yeah, and of course um, they're men of honor. Come on. This guy, it's like he doesn't even understand Game of Thrones. Okay, no, right. I understand. So then, of course, the, the hound is going to fight the head of the, the Band of Brothers yeah. <laughs> next week. Band of Brothers. <laughs> right? yeah. uh, and that's a fucking shame. One of them's going to have to die, yeah. you would imagine. Uh, and I those are both incredibly cool characters. I don't think they are. I think maybe, maybe the hound comes aboard because, as the course, hound points I want out, he's the not hound as. to come aboard. It, it makes total sense. Maybe he has to kill the leader to come aboard. Maybe, maybe I take the leader. To become the leader, exactly. Maybe I take the pen and the yeah. book and I throw it next week. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, I, what I love about the little interaction they have, though, is that the Hound is one of the biggest guys, one of the best fighters. He's not scared of anybody. But when Beric Dondarrion says, I'm going to fight you, Beric Dondarrion's willingness to do that makes him kind like of scared. The, the like, yeah. like, yeah, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And that's it's the nice first time we've ever seen an ounce of fear in the Hound. Also, you not saw, related to fire. You saw with that, oh, what's right. that guy's name, Daenerys? Beric Dondarrion? Beric. 
Barrett Tundarian. <laughs> the, uh, so Barrett, why, why do they have a Daenerys Targaryen and, and a Barrett Tundarian? And, and, yeah, Barrett well, Tundarian. They don't, they don't have a lot of dialogue back just, and forth. To be really. fair, the, the first mean. men were Armenian, so there's a lot of. <laughs> yeah, that was just. Cool. But he, they, but also you saw how he, they, they totally respect Arya, uh, because she, yeah. and again it's like, brave. and also interesting that we now have Starks positioned with two different groups who were sort of without banners. Two different groups who were like, enough with the families and the, and the nonsense. What are we, you know, they, there's some power so in the, the first? John, yeah. John Snow. Oh, right, Hell, right, they right. don't even they're, have organized leadership anymore. Right, they mean, right. right, they're sort of with these renegade right, groups right, of right. outcasts who are sort of, you know, individuals and willing to fight sort of any power yeah. and, the, um, and, you know, so, so the, populists. The Right, so, the, so these are all incredibly important points, and it's, it's, the show is so packed, it makes me want to stop it, pause it every five minutes, and, and soak it in. Right, yeah. Yeah. Like, more than think, just like, ah. Mm. Oh. Yeah. You know what I'm saying now? Uh, <laughs> and I feel like the hour goes by too quick. This is the it best did. hour of my life. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so there's two huge things. There's the dragons we'll get to at the end, I guess. And then there's what happened to the head of the watch, right? Right. And he gets betrayed. I didn't see that coming, of course, right? I didn't either. Like, I thought they were going to kill Craster and they were going to have an internal, hey, whoa, what's up, right? Mm -hmm. No, like, no, no, we're going to kill Craster and the head of the watch. Yeah. And, uh, and so now he, that was an incredibly pivotal character that died. When I saw the episode's title, I thought, uh-oh, is he or one of the really important night watchmen going to die? And then they... But then they did the funeral and they said they the thing, right? And I'm yeah. like, oh, thanks, God. <laughs> and then all sick that they got him anyway. And I, and I like, you know, Sam is smarter than, I mean, because Sam bolts off with the girl and mm -hmm. the baby, saving the baby. Because he, I, I thought at first, I was like, why are you running? Like, they're not, like, they killed this guy because they don't think they're safe there and they want to go back. But Sam, of course, recognizes that the guy who orchestrated this mm -hmm. sabotage and murder of uh, the head of the watch is like clearly would have killed Sam right then. Yeah. Well, he, they've been talking about how Sam's I know, but fat I, and he's lazy. Right, but yeah. I just thought they were like insulting him. But that guy's bad news. That right. And you see he, brothers fighting as he, as he's running off to to get to the girl. Well, There's brothers fighting each other. So that's the great advantage of Sam is that he's smarter than other people, right? Mm -hmm. So that as soon as the first move is made, the pawn, the first pawn is moved. He's like, oh, I see where this is going. I got to get out of here. Yeah. And he's also incredibly smart because that woman is his only chance to ever get laid. That's right. <laughs> right. right. And he played it so well. Like uh -huh. he's the hero. He saves her kid. If he doesn't get laid out of this, it's over for him. <laughs> okay. And by the way, there's no more Night's Watch. So he's free of the responsibilities of not getting laid. Yeah. I mean, in a sense, I mean, they're all nearly all killed they're each nearly other. Nearly all killed and, and, and largely ineffective. I think. And the guys who won, presumably, it appears that the, guy, the betrayers are the ones who are going to uh, come out ahead. Well, they're not, they're not gonna maintain the Night's Watch. They're not gonna want, I mean, yeah. The Night's Watch is basically done for and the wall is unguarded, we're in a lot of trouble. Well, just bear in mind, <laughs> they sent a lot of people north of the wall. They didn't send everybody. Oh, and there's still, okay, there's right, a couple right. of other fortresses. Like, they're not everybody's gone. But right. one thing that I loved about that scene is that it, the way that the show has portrayed the Night's Watch, I think it was too easy to forget that this is a collection of killers and rapists right, and right. criminals. These are, these are bad guys. Yeah, exactly. Like, right. some of them do their duty right. and everything, but they're the worst right. guys give, in the country. You give criminals and rapists the Lord of the Flies moment, and all hell's yeah. going to break loose. Especially when they're hungry and right. we, we and got We got to go, but, I mean, Daenerys with the, I mean, she's... One of the best on. scenes so far. The best, the yeah. best, yeah. Her speaking High Valerian is one of the sexiest things I've ever seen on TV, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> I again, mean, the degree the, the of gloating that I did with people <laughs> who weren't interested in hearing me gloat. <laughs> I'm with my girlfriend. I'm with my new baby. The baby's 25 days old. She didn't know why, you know. I'm like, I told you. I told you she speaks Valerian. I told you she speaks Valerian. Oh, and then leave. My girlfriend goes, she goes, she goes, yeah, I don't think you can make fun of John Iderola this week. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. you're gloating. Yeah, I was baby. gloating. I was gloating because I said yeah. that Daenerys, I knew she would speak Valerian. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So, the only problem with Daenerys is that she's so clearly the winner. If it was any other show, it would become slightly less interesting. She's got dragons. She's got now the largest army. Mm -hmm. She's clearly the smartest. Doom, 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 doom. Right, right. Yeah. And bravest yeah. leader. You know, I uh, put out a tweet there. It was really about Game of Thrones. I didn't put it on. But, you know, what makes a leader is a person who's not willing to do what others are not willing to do, take the risks that others are not willing to take. And so she's clearly a leader. Now, the only reason why you don't lose interest is Game of Thrones, she could die next week. Mm. Right? But, also, but also, the Mormont's, Mormont's son, which right. one is that? Jorah. Jorah, like he has two different looks. He has a look of like when she, when she does it. Right. Like he's like, okay, right? Uh -huh. But then at the end, she's sort of like, he's also worried. 
Like yeah, the, him the, and and Barristan Selmy, uh, the, throughout that whole thing, they had this look of like concern. Right. Like they should be elated. Hey, we got the army, we got the dragons, and it looks like she's the real leader. Yeah. But they're like, whoa, I'm not sure we knew who she was. Right. Well, because it's, and, it's but, wise. But, it, but also, like they always say, with the Targaryens, you flip a coin with every one, and half the time it comes up crazy. And if she does all this, maybe they're worrying, oh shit, is she one of the crazy Targaryens? Well, oh. it could be, but I think that they had a sense of like... Oh yeah, I forgot, she's going to be crazy. Right, 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 right. What? She's going to turn out, she's going to hit 30 and have a strand of craziness in her. Ah, well, it could be, but but I think that that was the moment they realized, oh, she is the dragon. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, Barristan Selmy, the other guy yeah. kind of already knew, right? Like, because he had already been talking, like, even though he was there and he came out to seek her, remember in the last episode, he said, I fought with whatever Rhaegar Targaryen, okay. the last dragon, and she said, he wasn't the last dragon, right? Yeah. And in that scene, he's like, oh, damn, she was <laughs> right. He wasn't the last dragon. We, yeah. um, we're over time. We got to go. Uh, any, uh, uh, you can't make a prediction. No, I can't. Um, can you, you ever have any thoughts on, on where we're headed? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, look, look, I, look, look. Daenerys, I, I think, is the ultimate winner. I, I've thought that from the beginning. But then, you know, they, this is the one show where foreshadowing isn't necessarily going to happen. I mean, because they're foreshadowing multiple things. The, the crazy fire lady says that Stannis is going to be the, uh, sitting on the Iron Throne. So you got foreshadowing in a bunch of different directions. But Stannis, I mean, he looks like he's done for. I know, there'll be a great <laughs> revival. But I just keep thinking, who's going to beat the dragons? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think anybody's going to beat the dragons. There'll be an alliance between uh, Jamie and Rob. Like, that's coming in some way. Jamie and Rob? Yeah, Jamie will help Rob. Wow. Okay. Help get the kids back, do something. I, I think uh, you may be getting a little cocky. I don't think so. All I right. think that's coming. Uh, and then ultimately, in this end, uh, this is all go I'm going all the way to the end. Uh -huh. <laughs> that yeah, I guess nobody beats the dragons, but at some point there has to be some alliance uh, between Rob blah, 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 if he still lives, and uh, Rob could die next week. I have no faith that Rob lives long between Rob blah, blah, and Daenerys. I'm going I'm to say one thing. This isn't really a prediction, but even for people who have read the books and think that they know what's going on, I don't know if they would have noticed that something happens in this episode. There's, there's a conversation going on, and one of the people doing the conversation is doing something while they're talking, and that is foreshadowing what is going to be the most amazing thing that happens this season. I'm not going to say what it is, Ooh. but that even if you've read it, watch it again. Oh, for and Christ's you might not, you, sake. There's really no way for you to realize what's happening, but considering what's being talked about and what the person's doing, it's setting up the best scene so far in the first three seasons. Oh, wow. come on. Better than Ned Stark getting his head chopped off. Better than that. Uh, we'll come back. Uh, what's the come point back. of going through the rest of the week? I just want to fast forward <laughs> my <laughs> life to Sunday. Right, yeah, but first, first we got to go back and watch it. Each of them, like, is that person cooking while talking in the background? <laughs> All right, yeah, and right. last thing. I, look, I have no uh, predictions. I think I did for uh, next week, but I've already forgotten. But, but no, seriously, overall, my, for the culmination of the show, my overall two arching predictions, since you asked, is that this is just a, all of this is a teaser, appetizer, for the White Walkers meeting the dragons. Mm -hmm. A story of a song of fire and ice. Mm -hmm. Fire, ice. Everything in the middle, Stannis, Renly, yeah, good luck to you folks. Okay? <laughs> we got a pincer move coming, right? And they're coming towards Stannis. each other. Stannis. Right. And everything, in the, and everything in the middle is going to get crushed, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And then number two, uh, you know, the outcast. This, the author loves the outcast. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. So the most critical players have to be Jon Snow and uh, Tyrion Lannister. And then, you know, the, you know, Varys is an outcast in a sense. Tyrion and, and Jon Snow already had that great conversation in season oh, one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. And, and Tyrion and, and Varys have this kind of friendship. Yeah, I don't, you're too on. Un Varys is untrustworthy. No, I hear you. He's, I, keep, he's, he's a spider. He's There's a spider it, in the garden. He's got a sorcerer in a box. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, see you next week, everybody. Enjoy.